Today we're going to add to the parallelogram family and talk about the rectangles, the rhombi, and the square, 6, 4, and 6, 5. So let's start with some of the properties of each. So the rectangle. I put a number 7 next to the rectangle because there are seven different properties that a rectangle has. Now, conveniently, because a rectangle is a member of a parallelogram family, it already has five of the parallelogram properties, all five of them. So really, there are only two extra properties that you need to remember from the rectangle. Now, you might already know in a rectangle from your prior days that um, what the angles are in the corners of the rectangle. And hopefully you remember that they are 90 degree angles. So that's one of the extra properties. Now, the other property you probably don't know of, and I'm going to go ahead and label the five parallelogram properties just so you can see what a rectangle is. We know opposite sides are congruent from that first property. Opposite sides are also parallel in a rectangle. Okay? Opposite angles are congruent, so that's already listed, and same side interior, 180, so that's also true. Now, in the diagonals of a rectangle, and this one's a long one, okay? The diagonals are bisected. Okay? I'm going to put three here because they're not the same length of the sides, right? And there's going to be four here. So uh, uh, diagonals bisect each other, but we also actually know the second property is that not only are they bisected, they're all congruent. So since this has four, I'm going to put four here and four here. So the two extra properties are sides are perpendicular. That's where we get these 90 degrees, because perpendicular means 90 degrees. So sides are perpendicular and diagonals are congruent now. These are the two extra. Now, I'm going to highlight a couple things within a rectangle. There are some specific triangles that you need to realize that are within the rectangle. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and draw this triangle out here, okay? which all four of the, tri the little triangles in here are the same, but I want you to see, well, here's four markings. I know that might be a little confusing, and four markings, but one on the bottom. So looking at this, we know it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so within a rectangle, there are isosceles triangles, and you really need to remember this key part. Remember the base angles are gonna be congruent. Well, it's gonna help you find some angles. That's one thing. Another thing you can re, um, notice is that we do have right triangles. I'm going to outline this green one here. Okay, so we have right triangles within a rectangle. So a couple things that you might see. We know Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. You might see some Sopatoa within there because you have a right triangle. And we might even throw a 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90 within that rectangle, okay? Or the special right triangle. So that's the rectangle. You need to really memorize these two extra. They're really important. So here is the next um, shape that's also within the parallelogram family. So we know the rhombus. It has eight properties, and it actually has, same thing, five of the parallelogram properties. So I'm just going to label that on my diagram. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite sides are parallel. Okay. We have opposite angles being congruent, and they're not 90 now because it is slanted. And we have diagonals with inside of our shape, and I'll mark that with three and three. They are not congruent, so there's four and four. Okay, so they don't actually have, the rhombus doesn't have the two extra for the parallel or from the rectangle. It has something else. So what I'm going to uh, tell you is that sometimes we think of the rhombus as a slanted square because most of the time when you see a square or you hear about a square, you realize that a square has all equal sides. So really, all four of these sides are equal. So that's the first one. And I'm just going to show you all three because they are very different. So the sides are congruent, so all four sides are the same. It's almost like you pushed a square and it toppled over and you got the rhombus. Diagonals are perpendicular, so not that the sides are perpendicular, but now I can add in 90 degrees on the inside, okay? So rectangles have the perpendicular on the corners. Rhombus has the perpendicular, the 90 inside with the diagonals. And the last one is one that we tend to forget, that diagonals bisect opposite angles. So what that means is this angle is equal to that. Likewise, this two. So all four of these angles here are equal. And then, I'll use red for the other one. These two angles are equal. Likewise, these two angles are equal because they're bisected, OK? 
Okay, they're cut in half. So those are the three extra properties that you need to know for a rhombus. All right, let's talk about the last one in the parallelogram family, and it's the square. The square has 10 different properties, okay? It has five from the parallelogram, but we have these five extra. So let's think about it. We had two extra from the rectangle and three extra from the rhombus. So now if you add 5 plus 2 plus 3, you get 10 properties. So the square has all the properties that we've just talked about. Okay, so let's look at what a square might look like. And it seems confusing, but it's easy. We've got all the sides are equal, and that comes from the rhombus, plus the opposite sides are equal. Opposite sides are parallel because it's the parallelogram family. Okay. Opposite angles are equal, but we also know from the rectangle that all the angles are 90 degrees. So we'll mark that. Drawing in our diagonals with the rhombus, I'm sorry, with the rectangle, we know that they're all equal here. And then we also know from the rhombus that we've got 90 degrees on the inside. And one last thing from the rhombus that makes your life easy is that the diagonals are bisected, so all these 90 degrees are bisected into a 45-45-90 triangles, okay? So really, you know every single angle within a square already. And once again, we have isosceles triangles, we have right triangles, we definitely will be using the c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and you will absolutely use the 45-45-90 triangle. So hopefully you remember the 45-45-90 is 1, 1 to the square root of 2, is that ratio, okay? So don't forget any of that. And you probably, you might be able to see a Sokotoa in there. Um, so all of these with triangles, you'll see again within the square. So let's go ahead and do a couple problems with numbers. So the, these first two say what type of quad, I mean what type of the quadrilateral looking what's given and then solve for x and y. So the first one on the left, let's look at the sides. All the sides are marked congruent. So that means it can either be a square or a rhombus. Those are our two choices. Now, since we looked at the sides, let's look at the angles. Q is 97 degrees. So if you remember, in a square, it should be 90 degrees. So that means this is not a square. This is actually a rhombus. So let's go ahead and solve this. For your sides, since they're equal, we can just set these equal to solve for x. 5x plus 6 equals 8x. Subtract your 5x, so 6 equals 3x. Therefore, x equals 2. Now for your angles, this just goes back to parallelograms. These are consecutive interior angles. So you know they add up 97 plus 12y minus 1 add up to equal 180. Okay, so same side interior give you 180, nothing different from the parallelogram. Once you do your math, you should get y to equal 7. Here are our two answers. Right now pause and see if you can figure out the second one, name it, and solve for x and y. Alright, so let's take a look at this work and see if you guys got the right answer. Go ahead and move this down. It is a square, okay? All sides are equal. The angles are the 90 um, in the corners and in the center. So that's why we know it's a square. For x, x is the side length, so all you have to do is set it equal. That's how I got x to equal four. But if you remember, that seven y plus three is pointing to part of that 90, which remember we just we said that all these angles here in the square are 45. That's why I was able to equal 7y plus 3 equal to 45, solve, and you get y to equal 6. All right, we're going to do an example of each and just run through some questions. So this is the rectangle. Go ahead and draw this out, and we're going to answer these four questions here, sides and angles. So the first one asks us to find st which is part of the diagonal. Well, they give us up here that QS, this whole thing, is 18. So remember, diagonals are all congruent. So if I know they're congruent, all I gotta do is 18 divided by two to give me ST to be nine, okay? The second one asks for PR, the length of this diagonal. 
Well, I just said diagonals are congruent, so therefore PR is going to equal the diagonal QS, which is 18. Now let's talk about some angles. This is the fun part. So, angle, QPR. QPR is this angle up here in the corner. Now, anytime I see a rectangle, I tell you guys to just draw them where the 90s go, because you know they're going to be 90s somewhere. Well, we know there's 90s in the corner because it's a rectangle. Well, I'm trying to find that angle there. Well, I already have 90 marked there, so to find x, you do 90 minus 62 to give us the other angle. So 90 minus 62 gives you 28 for that angle there. So I'll go ahead and erase and fill that in. Now, the last one asks for PTQ, which is this angle there in the middle. Now, I realize we always look for triangles. And remember, what type of triangle is, with, is within an, a rectangle? Isosceles. So the reason I'm telling you this is because we already have 28 there, and 28 is our base angle. Okay, so I know 28 is going to go over here too. So that really does help us out, because now we can just solve for x by doing 180 with a triangle. 28 plus 28 plus x equals 180. So when you solve your equation, you should get x, or angle PTQ, to be 124. So you have to remember isosceles, though. If you forget the isosceles, you're going to have a hard time trying to figure that one out. So that's a rectangle. Let's take a look at the rhombus. Okay, the first one asks us to find the side length, of, or I'm sorry, the diagonal, BY. Okay, and remember, the 90 degree angles are not in the corners, it's a rhombus. So I always tell you, whenever you see rhombus, just go ahead and throw your 90s in so that you remember where they are located. Now, we're needing to find this diagonal. It, does, it only gives us eight, but that is not what this diagonal is. They're not congruent like the rectangle. So we gotta figure something else out. Well, I see that we're given eight and 10, and I'm gonna just outline this triangle right here and redraw it on the side because we have 10, we've got a 90 degree angle, and we have eight, and really this is the side length we're trying to figure out. So hopefully, now that you see that redrawn, what pops in your head is the Pythagorean theorem. So we have 10 squared, because that's our C, should equal eight squared plus x squared. So when you solve for the Pythagorean theorem, you get vy to equal six. Okay, so triangles are very important within all of these shapes. So I'm just gonna label six there for vy. Now, we are going to find y, I'm sorry, wy, which is the whole diagonal. Well, we just found part, so remember, those are bisected, so that part will be 6. So the whole diagonal will be 12, 6 plus 6. Now, let's take a look at the angles, okay? So we've got to remember some of those properties with the angles. First one says x, y, z. So x, y, is that entire angle here, so we have to include both little parts. Okay, well, I've got my 90 still in there, because I know what, that's 90. Well, within our triangle again, okay, I can figure out, we've got 90, 34, I can figure out this little part here of our angle. So when you add up 90 plus 34, and I'm just going to label the other one x, it's a triangle, so it's 180. Right? So once you do that, you should get that x equals 56. Well, that's not what x, y, z is. That's only part of the angle. Okay, so this will be 56. But remember, one of the properties of a rhombus is that this diagonal is bisected, so this is going to be 56. They're going to be equal. So now you can add 56 plus 56 to find that entire angle to be 112. All right, the last angle, I'm just going to erase some of this. Asks us for W, Z, V. Ooh, sorry, I just went to Y. W, Z, V. Okay, and just like we talked about, what do we know about these two angles? Well, they're bisected and congruent, so this angle is going to be 34. And there's the rhombus. All right, I want you to see if you can do the square on your own, so go ahead and pause it and fill in these blanks. The square has a lot already figured out for you. All right, so let's see how you did. I wrote in the numbers, don't forget where the 90s and the 45s are. And then just remember about pretty much a lot of things being equal here, so that's equal to that. And then FH is equal 
to EG, EG, which is 30. So that's how we got 30. All right. So we are coming back to our Venn diagram. We've already got the quadrilateral and the parallelogram. So we're going to add in the rhombus, the square, and the rectangle. Well, the rectangle can go here. Okay. All of rectangles are parallelogram. Same with the rhombus. Those are like the brother and sister, the rectangle and rhombus. Like their parents are the parallelogram. Now, the square is actually in between here. Okay? It shares all the properties of the rhombus, the rectangle, and the parallelogram. So that's our parallelogram family and how they intertwine. I also tell you to think of it, parallelogram has like two offsprings, the rectangle and the rhombus. And then we know that the rhombus kind of has an offspring with the rectangle, which is the square. So that's kind of like a family tree that you can think of. So the square actually has all the properties of the rectangle, the rhombus, and the parallelograms. All right, so let's answer some questions with this Venn diagram where a lot of people get uh, confused. The question's gonna be all, some, or none. So take a minute to pause and see if you can answer these eight, all, some, or none, correctly. All right, so let's check over and see how you did. The ones that I find you guys making mistakes are, with are five, six, seven, and eight. If you notice, squares are rectangles. All squares are with inside that bubble. So every single square is going to be a rectangle. But if you flip it and say rectangles are squares, well these rectangles out here don't even touch the square bubble. So only some rectangles are squares. And it holds true for the rhombi in the squares. So it says rhombi are squares. Well, these rhombi out here are not a square. But all the squares are inside the rhombus bubble, bubble so every square is a rhombi. All right, that's a little bit confusing, but that's how it goes. So here's our challenge question. It says, where the following rhombus find the measure of angle D a, B, that's a tangle. It should be the measure of A, D, B. Sorry about that. Go ahead and try to figure out that measure and we'll talk about it tomorrow. 